Hello children um, and parents. I've put together a little um, phonics video for you to try and help you with starting off phase four at home because obviously we would normally teach this in school. Um, I'm using a resource from last year, so something that I do normally do in school with the children and they'll recognise it as the kind of phonics that we normally do at the beginning of the year. So what I will do in just a second is I will share my screen with you um, and you can have a go at going through it with your children, but also hopefully it will inspire you if you were going to carry on at home with phase four, it'll give you some idea of what phase four is and how you can teach it confidently at home with your child. So let me just share my screen with you. Children, look, it's as if we were on the carpet at school. So we are getting really good at sounding out new words. We're getting really good at using phase two and phase three sounds. And I know you've been practicing lots at home. So we're going to have a look today at phase four sounds. Now, none of these sounds in phase four will be new sounds. We know all of the sounds from phase four, but phase four is a bit all about rules. And the idea that if two phase two sounds are next to each other, what sound do they make when they're squished together? So let's have a look at one together so we get an idea. I've written a word, this one's got, this is a CBC word, it's got three sounds in it, let's see if we can sound it out. Hot pot, we all knew that I bet. Now I'm gonna change it slightly and you can see if you can see what I've done differently, what I've changed about the word, what do you notice? Let's have a look. Spot, spot. So I've added a s on the beginning. Now this new word, spot, it's got four sounds. I've got four sound buttons underneath. But because I know my phonics quite well, when I look at that word, I think, oh, sp. Oh yes, sp, that makes sp sound, sp -ot, spot. And it's made me be able to blend that word quicker uh, than I normally would if I sounded out every single sound. So let's have a practice of that sound. An S and a P together makes sp. Have a go, sp. It's hard because sometimes it sounds like a B, like a sb. So try not to make it sound too much like a B, but do remember that it can sometimes sound like a B in a word, so it's sp. I'm thinking of some words that have got sp at the beginning. Here's some that I thought of. I thought of spinning or spin. I thought of splash. And I thought of spoon. I bet you can think of some more. Have a little think while I have a think as well. Oh, what about speed? or space. There's quite a few actually. I've written the spellings for you so you can have a little look at how our phase four works. Look, the sp sound still has two sound buttons because it's two letters. Uh, they don't make one sound, they're not a digraph, but when they're close together and they're squished up, we know they make a sp sound. So I've got sp in, spin, splash, splash. Oh, look, there's a phase three sh sound there. Spoon, spoon, and there's another phase three ooh sound there. Now, with phase four, we looked at the beginning of a word starting with sp, but a lot of phase four sounds can also come at the end of the word, and sp is a good example. Have a look at these pictures. Do you know what they are of? I bet you do. We've got a wasp, and we've got some crisps. Now, let's think if we were to sound out wasp, you might hear that the sp sound is at the end of the word. Wasp is a weird word to sound out. It goes w, a, sp, wasp. So it actually says wasp, but we know it's wasp. And crisps. Let's imagine there's just one there. It would be a k, r, i, sp, crisp. Now, because I knew that sp close together made that sp sound, I made it a little bit easier for me to blend these words when I was trying to think in my head of how to spell them. So we know that S and P still make separate sounds. When we do this activity, you can get a piece of paper and have a go at doing this. You know that the S and the P will need their own box because they are separate sounds, they are not a digraph. But we also know that if we are reading a word like this now, S and P together, they make a sp sound. So it will just make it a little bit easier for us when we are blending. So on a piece of paper, have a go at writing out spot, spot, spin, sp in, and wasp, remember what I said, wasp, wasp. Now, if, you're, if you can do this in boxes, that's absolutely fine. These are called phoneme frames, parents, and we use them sometimes at school. Each sound is separated by its own box. So if it was a digraph, the two letters would go in the same box because they only make one sound. 
for phase four, it shows that they still need a separate box, even though we know that when they're close together, we can guess the sound, we can make the sound without having to sound every single one out. If you don't have, uh, if you can't draw out these grids, that's absolutely fine. Your children will be able to competently put sound buttons underneath and they work exactly the same. So for phase four, each sound will have its own button underneath. If we were looking at phase three and digraph sounds, they would have a line of dash underneath them to show that they make one sound when they are together. So children have a little go at that job. And then what you can do is you could think of some more words that have got a sp at the beginning or the end and you could have a go at writing those up while I just go through with mummies and daddies some other ideas for phase four phonics. So as you can see, phase four is quite a tricky one to teach because you're not teaching um, new sounds, you're not teaching alternate sounds, that comes up in phase five. And really you're trying to teach children to blend efficiently. So this, uh, this phase is more about when you see a new unfamiliar word, if it starts with an S and a P, you can make the assumption that it starts SP. And that will make blending a little bit easier and a little bit quicker. So I've got some examples here of some of the phase four sounds I might teach. I wouldn't teach every single phase four sound. If you Googled it and look up phase four sounds, there's quite a few. The idea is that when children get this, I, this idea that two sounds together, two consonants together, can be shortened when you're sounding out to make it a little bit easier. They don't need to learn every single one, it will just kind of come naturally. So the ideas I've gone for here, the examples I've gone for here are the cr sound, like in crack, the cl sound, like in clap, the pl sound, like in plate, the st sound like in start, but that also can come at the end of the word, a word like fast. So that's a good one to uh, focus on. I know that was on that worksheet for starfish as well. And the sw sound like in swept or speaks. So here are some that you might want to teach. You might want to have a look and think of some different ones that you think were more prominent in your child's reading books or in the writing that they do. Obviously, the way that I've set that out is, as I started this, you start with a, a word and then you add on a letter and see how that word has changed. And you can do that at the end as well as the beginning of a word. Um, the, the main point that we need to remember is that it is for blending, it is trying to get children to be confident blenders and um, that actually in terms of spelling and sound buttons, it doesn't change anything. That's important to remember because when they come to year one and doing their phonics check at the end of the year, which I assume they'll do, uh, they still need to know that a sp at the start of a word is an S and a P. We can hear both those sounds. They're not one sound together. Um, they're still two separate sounds. And when I, when I am segmenting, I'm still aware that they are two separate sounds. So that's quite, in, um, quite important when it comes to phase four. I'm going to just stop my screen share and bring myself back up. I hope that's a start and it makes it a little bit clearer um, in terms of what phase four is all about. I would say that it's the trickiest phase of phonics to teach children because it's a rule bender and things start to um, appear differently. And they did in phase two and three when everything was quite clear. Obviously when we go either the end of this term or into year one and we start to look at phase five. Uh, that's a much me more meatier phase. That's when all the alternate graphemes come in, so different ways to spell uh, the same sound. Um, so that's kind of the big one going into to year one and phase four is a filler and in between phase that helps children just to make them, like I said, become uh, good at segmenting, good at blending back together and make reading a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. I hope that's been helpful. Obviously, I'm always here to support you. If you need any help with anything, please do let me know, email me and I will get back to you in terms of anything to do with phonics. Um, the Letters and Sounds website is always really useful. If you go on to um, Phonics Play, if you actually looked into the teacher section, there's really good breakdowns of exactly what you're teaching for each phase. So there's lots of information out there on the internet. Please don't stress, um, it's a tricky phase to teach and if children don't have it, um, it's not the end of the world because they can still use all their separate sounds, they've all got phase two really confidently. So have fun um, having a go and I'll set some activities that are more to do with phase four as we go forward so that those people that are going on to phase four can work on those and those people that are still going to stay on to phase three can carry on to practice um, phase three for all the normal ways that you have done and hopefully using some of the games that I've sent in previous weeks as a bit of inspiration. 
I will see you all soon. Well done, guys. Thank you for listening. I hope that's helpful. Bye.